Hey guys, how's it going? And happy Thursday. I hope you all are doing good. I think this is the third time I've streamed this week, and I'll be streaming again during my normal live stream tomorrow night, which is Friday at 9.30 p.m. But I wanted to get on here to let you guys know that the 11 bill, three subject matter package, has passed the Michigan Senate. It did pass today, and these are some very serious bills. I'm also going to give you guys a quick recap on kind of everything that's going on right now because I have dozens of pages of bills sitting here in my hand, and we have over 30 gun control bills that are in various stages throughout committees, the Michigan House of Representatives, and the Michigan Senate. I'm going to start off by talking about what passed today, because that's probably what a lot of people want to know first, and then I'm going to go through some of these other ones, because it goes from really bad to even worse. And even worse than that, and I'll also let you guys in on a little inside scoop. I know there's some more gun control bills coming very soon that haven't even been posted or published yet. So there's more coming even in addition to all of these that, at least if you've been following this channel, that you already know about. And if you guys are new here, welcome. I'm glad you're here. I live in Michigan, and I'm fighting as hard as I possibly can to get all this information out to all of you. And if you guys want to share this channel with all of your friends, family in Michigan, and even throughout these United States, there's tons of resources about what's going on in Michigan right now. And I've also been keeping up with a lot of the national news, especially these executive orders that were just put out by the former vice president yesterday or day before yesterday, I should say, and how they literally tie in and are virtually synchronized with these bills that have just passed the Senate, and part of this has already been passed by the Michigan House. And if you know how a bill becomes a law, it means it's getting really, really close. And I'm also going to cover how a bill becomes a law in Michigan and talk about things that I've been doing videos on on this channel regarding immediate effect and things like that, which are going to become especially germane now that this has passed the Senate. And then I'll get in the chat and talk to you guys and maybe answer some questions. So we're looking at three main subjects. There were 11 bills, and that's how it's worded. It's like an 11 bill package, three subject matters, meaning they needed some of the other bills to change other parts of law, so like criminal procedures and sentencing guidelines. And yeah, there's a lot of laws in Michigan, way, way too many in my opinion. And here's the number of gun control laws that I think are constitutional in the state of Michigan and the United States. For those of you listening, I'm holding up a big, fat zero. There's going to be two minor silver linings in these bills. And I say minor, but not that it makes them good, not that it makes them okay. But there were two things that the minority, the Republican minority in the Senate, was able to hold the line on. And again, I don't like to make this stuff partisan. I don't really like either parties, guys. But yet again, we had a party line vote on these gun control bills, meaning the Senate, which is comprised of 38 senators. All 20 Democrats voted for these bills. All 18 Republican senators voted against these bills. I'm not making it political. They are. But it was literally a party line vote. And it's almost as bad as it could be as far as these bills concerning licensing registration, and universal background checks on not just pistols, which we've had in the state forever, but also now long guns, rifles, shotguns, other, anything, basically. This is also going to concern this so-called safe storage law, making it safe for the criminal and less safe for you. And you're responsible for the safety in your own home. You're responsible for raising your children. You're responsible for knowing how you need to store your guns because everybody's situation is unique, but the government just wants to put a big stamp on it and tell you how to keep your firearms where the criminal would be hmm, most safe within your home in the middle of the night when seconds matter, police are only minutes away, but you're only minutes away from getting into your gun safe or your cable or your whatever in the middle of the night. Well, they're going to be armed because 
As with all of these laws, they only affect the law abiding. Good people don't particularly need laws because we don't want to hurt anybody. We just want to be left alone. Bad people don't care what the law is. They're going to do whatever they want. And by the sheer definition, when we talk about criminal, they're breaking the law. So they're not going to follow any of these laws. And none of these bills that are probably soon going to become laws would have stopped any tragedy at Oxford or at Michigan State University. And they make us less safe. And don't forget that. And they're also attempting to make a lot of you criminals. Because just remember this, it's an old saying, but you need to think about it, and I do a lot. When guns are outlawed, only outlaws will own guns. And that has actually two distinct meanings, both of which are pretty scary. The other ones, the, they're going to call it extreme risk protection orders. Let's call it what it is. These are called red flag laws. Red like the communist flag. Red like if you see something, say something. Turn in your neighbor. Scorn X's are probably smiling ear to ear right now. Disgruntled old friends, first cousins, roommates, aunts, uncles. But don't forget, it's not just all of the scorn regular people in your life, also mental health professionals, police, throughout all of the various departments that we have in the state of Michigan. The government will be able to red flag you. Your ex-girlfriend can red flag you, your ex-wife can red flag you, but it's actually even worse than that. <clears throat> actually, somebody that you even went on a date with. And the way they define dating relationship, actually, the date didn't really even have to go so far. You don't have to have sexual intercourse with somebody before they can red flag you. In fact, you don't have to make it to third base or second base or even first base. You could have just gone out with somebody one time with the expectation that there would be somewhat of a romantic relationship. Hey, maybe she said she was cute online and you saw her when you showed up and you said, uh, no, that was a fake picture. I'm out of here. That encounter would be enough for that person to have standing the way I'm reading this. Maybe you had a nice dinner and said, hey, let's just be friends. That would also count if you were going there with any kind of expectation of it being a date Red flag, storage requirements, as well as universal licensing, background checks and registration. And let's call that what it is, because registration always has and always will lead to confiscation. This is the first step for them to be able to come for your guns. When I did that video with Senator Joe Bellino and Representative Jamie Thompson, I guess almost two weeks ago now, I recommend you guys watch it because it's very pertinent to what's going on here. Senator Bellino said, to me, it means we're coming in your house. Because how are they going to enforce this safe storage? How are they going to enforce these registrations? Look, the law right now doesn't say we're coming in your house, but I think the senator was being very candid with us, and I appreciate him saying that. The two small silver linings. Now well, there's three silver linings. Let me give you guys the big one that actually does matter. The first one is more and more people are starting to become aware of this in the state of Michigan, especially, but also throughout these United States. And a lot of you guys watching from other states right now are noticing, hold on a minute. Yes, this is Michigan, but Michigan is the big test bed for this whole country. And these recent executive actions, which are orders, which I just did a video on two days ago, a long stream here. If you're new here, you might want to check it out. Listen to it as a podcast while you're driving or whatever. This new national push, these national orders by the former vice president in the White House are to do with universal background checks. They are to do with storage, and they are to do with red flag laws and many other things. So this is Michigan right now, yes, but this is also the whole United States. And the one silver lining I am seeing is more and more people are starting to wake up and know what's going on here. Hopefully we can get the FUDs to unite with the three percenters, with the shall not be in friends, with the well, at least I want to keep some of my guns. Hopefully more and more people are starting to get it, that they're coming after everything now. I literally did a video yesterday talking about the BB gun ban. Yeah, I'm not even joking. It's on my channel here. So that's the biggest silver lining is the more they start attacking us, the more I'm seeing fellow good people 
in the state of Michigan and a lot of good people in these other 49 states that are rallying behind us. So that's a good thing. Now, what's the two little silver linings that happened in the Senate today? Well, as I talked about in a video, as well as I printed out this little article or whatever you want to call it, how a bill becomes a law. We said that this was likely to pass no matter what, but we weren't sure because if four Republicans came over with the Democrats on all three of these, this package is what it's called. And that is literally what it is. When they request to speak, they say, and request to speak on the entire package. So these get lumped together. They're separate bills, but they all get voted through essentially at the same time within the same session. Okay. And we talked about immediate effect. And the good thing is, is again, I don't like these two parties, but I'm, it just is what happened. They're making it political, not me. The Second Amendment in Michigan, Constitution, Article 1, Section 6, should never be political. But it is party lines. So every single Republican stood strong and voted against every one of these gun control aspects of this package. And it did not pass with the required majority to take immediate effect. I'm going to talk about that in one minute. Now, this article right here, or this fact sheet, whatever you want to call it, and all of these bills are all on a locals post, on my locals community. It's another site. It's a censorship-free site where I can post tons of content that you'll never see here because if I posted it, it would last for five minutes and I'd get my account banned due to all the very restrictive YouTube terms and conditions and policies that most of big tech has. Locals is not big tech. It's a place you can join for free and also a place you can financially support the channel. So go over there for whatever reason you want, but definitely check out that link down in the description where I included this as well as the links to all of these bills. And this is very important. Because by this not going into immediate effect, these three main bills, the 11 bill package, it is not going to take effect right now. In fact, it's not going to take effect and actually become law, even though the governor will be signing these soon. Two of these bills have to go back over to the House. There's going to be kind of a reconciliation period. All of that is explained here. I'm going to get into that in a few minutes. I just want to get the main points out of the way for those of you that don't have a particularly long time to watch tonight. 90 days after what's referred to as sine die, basically it's S-I-N-E space D-I-E. Well, that's fancy speak for the last time they gavel a session out and it's not going to return again until a whole new session starts. So sessions last two years. We just started the 102nd state legislature two months ago in the state of Michigan, almost exactly. It was on January 11th where I sat on the House floor as my state representative, Jamie Thompson's guest. So we've got all of 23 that we're in right now. 2024, then in January of 2025, that's when the 103rd legislature will start, okay? 90 days after that, these public acts will actually be codified into law. You can, they will be enforced. They will be executed. They will be encouraged by the federal government because just remember, Michigan was bribed $7.9 million, I believe, dollars to put these red flag laws in place already. And then now they're going to be doing this big government push to try to encourage and teach people how to red flag all throughout these United States. So what does that mean? No, it doesn't mean, I, I hate to even tell you guys this, but I always tell you guys the truth, whether it's good, bad, whatever. And part of me hates to actually tell you guys this because I just know human nature, but please don't let your friends buy into this. Some people have already heard me say, wait a minute, these three Senate bills aren't going to have effect until two years from now. All right, head in the sand. Who cares? Nothing to see here. And I know some people have the propensity towards that, and that's not why this is a little bit of a silver lining. No, we are still in dire straits. The only thing this does is gives us now time for some of the gun rights groups and lawyers, right? That's what it, it's going to have to happen. Lawyers have to go to court over this stuff. And by some of the current, they call it case law, Supreme Court precedent with recent cases like the so-called Bruin decision, New York State Rifle and Pistol Association v. Bruin. 
awesome Supreme Court decision, as well as fairly recent cases like Heller and McDonald and others. That gives time to litigate. It gives time to for gun rights groups to fundraise, to get legal teams together, to spend millions of our dollars to fight this stuff, while millions of our dollars that they confiscate from us, taxation stuff, in my opinion, they confiscate from us to defend the state. So it does give time for that. It also gives time for things like recall petitions, which if there's enough signees of these petitions would then evoke recall elections. There is currently no recall going on right now, and I can't even say that anybody is working on one because of state laws that require it to wait six months into the current session or the current election of a representative and one year for a senator who serve two and four-year terms respectively. So the official way to word it is there's no active recall petition yet because it wouldn't be legal, but people are thinking a lot about it to where they can start actually getting ready for these recall petitions and then recall elections very shortly thereafter. We have a representative in the Michigan House of Representatives that won by 600 votes, was also one of the most radical speakers and unhinged speakers on the floor of the House when they passed House Bill 4138 and its two companion bills. That's the Universal Background Checks Licensing Registration Scheme. There's also a senator, a Democrat senator in the Senate, Hertel, Hertel, H-E-R-T-E-L, Democrat that won by 400 votes or so. See, you'd think some of these Democrats that are in swing districts, that they would say, well, hold on a minute. I live in a very moderate area. And before the most secure, <laughs> the most secure, safe, and Fortified elections of all time, which I would note since I'm on YouTube, Susan Wiki Wiki, she's not the CEO anymore, but she is still there as an advisor. That's according to Time Magazine, which is a NewsGuard certified source. The most fortified elections of all time, the most fortified gerrymandering of the House and Senate districts in Michigan of all time. You would think some of these people would think to themselves and say, well, hold on a minute. I barely won after the most fortified gerrymandering and most fortified elections of all time. I still barely won by like less than a percent. Maybe I ought to be a little bit moderate on gun control. Nope. Nope. Still can't find a moderate. However, not a moderate Democrat anyways. And right now, it has been on all of these votes along the party line. Don't be surprised if Republicans don't come over with the Dems eventually on some. You never can trust all of them either. But here's the moral of the story. There's a lot of Democrats right now who were in such tight districts, they still don't care. They still voted for radical gun control, such as universal licensing, registration and background checks on all guns, including long guns. Red flag laws, which quite frankly are the most unconstitutional type of law you could have in Michigan or in this country, shouldn't even be allowed to exist in the United States of America. Okay? And these storage laws, that's a big deal too. A lot of people are going to get hemmed up on this because like the senator said in my recent video, that means they're going to want to come in your house. I mean, here's what's going to happen. A kid's going to get a hold of a gun somehow. Something's going to happen because there's a lot of people that live in this country and in the state of Michigan. Something's always going to happen. Freedom isn't free. And something's going to happen sometime here in the future, probably right when they need it to happen the most. You know, that's when the Michigan State tragedy happened. Some of you guys can bear witness to that. I was literally on this channel talking about here's the plan. It was in the newspaper. Here's how they are going to get gun control passed throughout this term. And while I was live talking about their manipulative plan that they were going to use, it's on my channel. If you guys are bored and you're new here, you can go watch this. While I'm live talking about the plan, because that was one of their big things they wanted to do now that they have Democrat majority with the governor, the House, the Senate, the Secretary of State, the Attorney General, Anyone else you can think of, and the Michigan Supreme Court has gone liberal. They're like, we're passing gun control. They were telling us how, and I was telling you guys how they're going to do it. And then the Michigan State tragedy happens. Right at the exact second 
that it suited their agenda the most. And then immediately the next day, they were dancing on the graves of those poor students. So something will happen where something will happen where a kid gets a gun and they'll say, well, hold on a minute. How do we know if everyone's storing firearms safely? Then they're going to have to pass another law saying, well, now we have to come in your house. And if you want to own a gun, we have to do routine inspections. Red flag laws. You get red flagged, they're coming in your house. This is called an ex parte hearing where somebody red flags you. A whole long list of people. I've talked about this plenty of times in the past. But it can include, real quick, because I know there's a lot of new people here and welcome. It can include a family member, which is a parent, a son or daughter, a sibling, a grandparent, a grandchild, an aunt or an uncle, a first cousin. Law enforcement agency, which means any of the following, a sheriff's department, the Department of State Police, a police department of a township, village, or incorporated city. The public safety department of an institution of higher education created under or described in Article 8 of the State Constitution of 1963. Okay. So that's what family members and law enforcement are. Any of the following may file an action under this section. Here's who can flag you. Now, keep in mind, at the same time, the federal government is now going to put tons of money up to educate and to encourage and try to scare every American and every law enforcement agency to red flag people as much as possible. This is all a concerted effort. It's working together. There's no such thing as coincidence. The spouse of the defendant, a former spouse of the defendant, an individual who has a child in common with a defendant. By the way, you're the defendant when they're flagging you an individual who has or has had a dating relationship with the defendant an individual who resides or has resided in the same household with the defendant a family member law enforcement officer a mental health professional okay and they go on to define all these things and somebody you've had a dating relationship with is way more than what you'd even think it means Hey, do you want to go out? Yeah, sure. And never mind. That's a dating relationship. Seriously. The links for all of these are in that Locals post, which is linked in the description here in this video. So you get flagged. <clears throat> they have what's called an ex parte hearing, meaning you don't even know about the hearing. They come in. They convince the judge. That the way it's worded right now, although I think they may be changing this with substitutes before it goes through the house, but right now it's a preponderance of evidence, meaning if the judge is 51% sure you're a risk to yourself or others, according to the affidavit of the person that flagged you, the plaintiff, they might be changing it to clear and convincing evidence, but I don't want to bore you guys too much with the details. There's a lot more to evolve with these as they go through the house. So... You have a hearing that you don't even know about, which means you cannot face your accuser, which is guaranteed under the Bill of Rights. You cannot be there with exculpatory evidence, meaning stuff to prove your own innocence. No. It's called take the guns first, then due process, which if you understand even the basis of due process, they're now really telling you there's no due process at all. So there's a secret hearing that happens behind your back with a secret court date that you never knew about, and it's already decided whether you're a risk to yourself or others by the allegations of, oh, your ex-wife, let's just say, or girlfriend. Oh, geez, what can go wrong there, right? Come on. This is called the Vengeance and Scorn and Revenge Act of 2023, if I could name it. And then they come to your house. And in certain states that have already enacted these, like Maryland and others, there's already been several documented cases of the, quote, law-abiding citizen. We always talk about that. Remember, when they outlaw guns, only outlaws will own guns, which means you'll give them up or you'll become a criminal. There's a lot to that. They kicked in this guy's door. Now, him being a law-abiding citizen, he would have no presumption he'd have a warrant out or... I mean, why would the cops be coming to his house? He did nothing wrong. Well, he didn't do anything wrong, but he was red flagged. So when his door was kicked in by the police, you guys can look this story up. I wish I had a name where you could find it easier, but this did happen in Maryland just a couple of years ago. When the cops kicked in the door, he did what anybody would do. He came to the door with a gun to apprehend the criminals that he thought. He thought it was somebody breaking in his house, no doubt. But it was the police. And when police see a gun, they yell, gun, gun, gun. 
and the one cop will tell you freeze. The other will say, get on the ground. And if you listen to the one cop that told you to get on the ground, the one that says to freeze shoots you. If you freeze and listen to what the other cop told you, the cop that told you to get on the ground shoots you. You guys have seen these videos. This is what happens in the heat of the moment. They killed the man. Shot him dead in his own home because they broke into his house in the middle of the night with to execute a no-knock warrant for a red flag law. Now keep in mind, this guy had never gotten a trial by a jury of his peers within his local jurisdiction. He never got the right to an attorney. He never got to face his accuser. He never got to provide evidence in his own defense. These red flag laws are very, very scary. And they say that they're doing this to help people with mental health. And mental health is a problem in this country. And I think it's the root of almost all of these problems that we have with violence. But there's nothing in a red flag law that mandates any type of removing the person from the people that they're supposedly violent towards. Let's just say somebody allegedly was flagged because they were threatening their wife and kids. Say they were threatening them with a kitchen steak knife. Let's just say that was the allegation. I'm giving you guys a very probable and actual, very plausible and even probable scenario that probably has happened and no doubt will happen in the state of Michigan. Say he was threatening them with a steak knife, but he did own some firearms as well. They would come under these red flag laws and take the guns first. Just take the guns. And then later on, you can come back, by the way, and petition the court. But you have to do it quickly, within 15 days. And by the way, it's like a civil matter, so you don't get a court-appointed attorney because that doesn't fall under that part of the Bill of Rights. So you have to do the legal counsel with your own money. But if you're red flagged and you violate any of the terms, then it does become criminal. Misdemeanor followed by felony, followed by a super heavy felony. Okay? So let me back up, though. So the goal is, they're going to say, this is what the other side says with the red flag. They say, well, there's somebody that's in imminent danger. Somebody could be threatening them or their self or their family or others, and we need to get the gun out so that they can't hurt anybody. That's what they are try to say when they call this common sense. But they won't tell you the truth. They won't tell you all of it. Because... In my opinion, by reading this, they're not trying to even get close to the root of the problem. And they're not trying to make anybody safe. They're only trying to grab guns. Because did you know, if you threatened your family with a, if somebody threatened, them, not you, but if somebody threatened their family with a steak knife, they would come and take all their guns. But they wouldn't take the steak knife. And they wouldn't remove the person from the home. And they wouldn't mandate that the person has counseling. No. They would literally leave the person with the exact weapon that they were making threats with right within the home, and they would just take all their guns and leave and still leave the person with the weapon that they were promising to use. Now, just think about that for a minute. To, red, to be red flagged, it doesn't say that you had to be using a firearm, although that's one of the different things. It says nothing about the person getting any mental health help or checkup or evaluation. Not that I really like them coming into people's houses and forcing them to have things. I don't really like the government getting involved in any of our lives. If they would just remove their boot off of our neck and all these restrictions on all the good people, we could protect ourselves fully. And I think criminals would be a lot less likely to do things if they thought that people could actually fight back and defend themselves without worrying about being in court forever and are going to prison just for protecting themselves. There's nothing in here that says that they're actually going to give them any type of mental health treatment. I mean, you can go through all of this. It just talks about all the ways you get in trouble if on the first offense of you knowingly possessing a firearm with a red flag. On the second offense, it goes through all these things, third offense. It goes through talking about if the defendant has a CPL, they're going to revoke that from you. It goes through how they're going to take the guns, how the person can prove their innocence. This is not America. In America, a law like this literally cannot exist. You are presumed to be innocent. Not here. Not with red flag laws. You have to come back and prove that you're not what that person attested you were. And then you might get your guns back, but you might not either. 
goes through all the places they have to notify. It goes through that the judge has to hold this hearing within 24 hours. And the video I did with the senator and representative about this topic, I recommend you guys watch it if you haven't yet. They were saying, well, in certain, in certain counties, sure, maybe. But like in Wayne County, Michigan, to get a judge to do a hearing with how much of a mess and how backlogged their dockets are within 24 hours, I don't think so. Not going to be possible. Anyone that even knows anything about Wayne County, what is it, two, three years later, people are still trying to get their CPLs? You think in Wayne County, Michigan, just by the way, anyone in another state, that's where Detroit's at. So the county in which Detroit is located, you really think they're going to be able to do a hearing within 24 hours. It ain't going to happen. But you'll read through here and you'll read through here and I kind of had to take most of the day off from the channel yesterday, guys, and I did talk about it day before yesterday, and I appreciate all the condolences. My grandmother did pass away. It must have been the way I said it. A couple of people got confused. I said I wanted to be there for my dad because my dad's mother passed away, and my brother and I were there, and my mom was there, and a bunch of other relatives, and I was glad I was there with him for that. So I kind of took yesterday off, but I did record a video when I was in Lansing on Tuesday with representatives Jamie Green and Jamie Thompson, and I think you guys will like that. I'll probably split it up into two videos. And we were talking about some of these things with red flag laws. It's like, well, hold on a minute. They claim their intent is this, but they don't provide any mental health help. And look, I'm not naive, guys. I know there's people out there that are a danger to themselves and others, clearly, obviously. There are people that, yeah probably shouldn't be able to be in anything other than a padded area for, you know, because they're literally just that unhinged and evil and just whatever. I'm not a mental health professional, so I don't want to just throw out words because I know all these words do have specific meanings. Everyone likes to run around and say they're so insane. Well, that's actually more of a specific thing, but I do know there's evil in this world. But I know that there's evil in this world and the people that voted for these bills, because this just comes after somebody's guns, removes the presumption of innocence, completely violates due process of law. You know, the Bill of Rights is pretty clear on that. You're not to be deprived of life or property without due process of law. Now, here's the crappy part. We've got maybe a couple of years to litigate this now, depending what the House puts up and depending on what they reconcile. This is not over yet. The House has passed the universal background check licensing registration. The House has not taken up votes yet on the red flag laws or the storage. Okay? I'm going to read this little thing on how a bill becomes a law in just a minute. It will hopefully connect the dots for you guys because this gets really complicated. But as of right now, the Senate did hold the line, and it was on a party line vote, to not let this take immediate effect. The Self-proclaimed pro-gun senators did actually vote against this this time, is what I'm trying to say. Here's what's kind of a bummer, though. The Supreme Court of the United States, they got so close in that Canigula case. I talked about that on this channel a couple years ago now. They were like two words away from declaring red flag laws unconstitutional. However, they didn't. <sighs> They did state that they can't take guns as far as their their protective duties, so-called. But they came, they were, do you guys know the case I'm talking about? It was called Canigula. It was a Supreme Court case real recently in the last two, three years. And they got like, essentially, they could have added two more words. and But they didn't. The Supreme Court has not ruled red flag laws unconstitutional yet. Maybe never. I don't know. So there's time to fight this in court. However, according to what they call case law, look, all this frustrates the crap out of me. If you guys are shaking your heads being like, who cares about case law? Who cares about all this? Look, I agree. The Constitution, the supreme law of the land, it says shall not be infringed. It says we have due process of law. Like, I'm totally with you guys. But the way things really work, unfortunately, in the state we've this country's degraded into is case law can mean more than the Constitution. And the Supreme Court hasn't decided on red flag laws definitively yet. 
QD, what's happening, man? A few minutes ago, you said you left out the part where they throw a flashbang in your baby's crib and kill your dog. Oh, well, of course. Thanks for reminding me of that. The dog's always the first to go. I mean, that's what kicked off Ruby Ridge. You guys remember that with Randy Weaver? Killed a good portion of his family. But that started with the dog. Oh, yeah, your dog's just gone. End of story. <laughs> Man's best friend. And that is the case for a lot of people who love their dog. But, yeah, your dog's dead if they come to execute some type of warrant for red flag law. I mean, in almost all cases. <sighs> this is sad. There was another provision within this package. This is the other very small silver lining. In this 11 bill package, they had stripped prior language and statute that actually provided immunity for firearms manufacturers and dealers, meaning your local gun shop, from being sued for the misuse of a firearm. Now, this has been a hot topic federally, actually. And the way this package was expected to pass would have had it where there was no immunity, meaning every gun shop would have been sued out of existence and manufacturing the state of Michigan would have been sued out of existence very swiftly. Again, this isn't a victory. We, these, these three bills just passed, these three subjects rather passed in that big package in the Senate today. But the teeny silver lining is they put in what's called a substitute bill. Talked about this a little more on the previous stream. I won't get into it a lot, but there was a substitute put in that kept that language in there. So as of right this minute, they still have the immunity from being sued for the misuse of a firearm. Now, we don't mean and they never have had the immunity from being sued outright. Of course, you can sue a firearms manufacturer if they make a faulty product. Okay. And there can be recalls and safety bulletins and all that, just like there are with automobiles on firearms, because sometimes there is a defective product. I assume if your local gun shop did you wrong with something to do with contract law, you can still sue them for that. It's just there was an attempt up until the last minute to make it where if somebody bought a firearm from a gun shop and it happened to be a high point, and then they used it later on down the line, or anybody used it down the line for a murder. They could come back and hold the gun shop and the manufacturer. So your local gun shop, fill in the blank, your favorite one, unfortunately it would be, right? Where they could get sued and the manufacturer could get sued and be held liable for wrongful death and all these different things because somebody misused a product that was sold legally. The small silver lining is they put those immunities back in at the last minute. Now, it doesn't sound like much, but the two things is there's now two years, essentially, to fight this. Or to hold recall elections when it's, when it's legally appropriate to do so. For all of you listening on the other side right now, the spies, there is no recall election right now. There are no petitions. That would be illegal. But starting on the day that it is legal, maybe get enough of them recalled. And I think there is some hope with that. I did a video with Brendan from Great Lakes Gun Rights, and he talked about that briefly. And I think I'm going to have him do another video with me soon as things get closer, talking about things like that. You know, there's a group called NAGR, National Association for Gun Rights. They're the parent group for Great Lakes Gun Rights. They did successfully recall three Democrat senators from Colorado when they passed the magazine bans, magazine um, limit restrictions. So they have done it before, meaning they know how to do it. And they're fundraising like crazy right now to try to get ready for it. And I did put the link for Great Lakes Gun Rights down there in the description. I get no kickback. It's not an affiliate link. I don't work for them, but I did sign up for the $30 membership. And as I get more money in, I plan on trying to support them whenever I can. So that's something they're actively working on right now. There's two ways to look at this. We need to hold all of these people accountable peacefully at the ballot box, at the recall petition, in the court of public opinion, okay? The voted for these. And it's real easy. 
there's a link down there in the description of this video right now, or for all of you listening on replay. Shout out to you too. There's a list of all your senators. If you want to know who voted for the gun control, just click on the Democrat section. Every one of them did. If you want to know, know those that voted against the gun control package, click on the Republicans. All of them voted against it. I'm not standing up for Republicans one more time. I'm just saying this is literally how the vote went. It went what's on called party line. Now, I'm going to share with you guys real quick something that I put in a post. And I posted this to locals and on um and on you on not on YouTube, we're on YouTube right now, on locals as well as Facebook. And I, I texted my senator who did vote no on the whole package. And you guys can do whatever you want. I'm not telling you I want you to do this, but I can tell you what, from what I was telling you just in this last stream, we really need to get behind the people that are doing what we demand they do because the other side's attacking them like crazy right now. And if we don't make our voices known that, yes, I approve or thank you for voting against these, if we stay silent, they might. some of them might start to think to themselves well, hold on. There really aren't that many pro 2A people in Michigan. Hmm. I thought I had my people behind me. Maybe I don't. You guys know where I'm heading with this. If they get a thousand calls from Moms Demand Action and Giffords and Bloomberg and all these billionaires who fund all of this, if they get a thousand calls saying, shame on you, you voted against this safe community safety, and that's how they'll dress up all these gun control bills, and then 10 of us call their office and say, thank you for protecting our God-given natural right to keep and bear arms. I could see certain politicians folding and saying, well, hold on a minute. If a thousand people are mad that I voted against gun control and only 10 people are happy, maybe I know where I need to go next time. I don't know if you guys agree with me that 100% or not, but that's, my, that's how I look at it. That's my belief on this topic. And in some cases, it's not going to matter one way or another. Some Democrats are so ardently anti-gun, no matter what you could say to them, we could reincarnate Thomas Jefferson himself to give the speech. They'd still vote no, because they're just, they're, they still vote for gun control, because they're just so evil. Then there's other people in the Michigan House and Senate that are just so pro-Second Amendment that they could have all 89,000 of their constituents say, we support gun control, and they're still going to vote no, because they believe in their oath that much. And that's also true. But there's a lot of them that are politicians. And they will look at kind of like what way the consensus is flowing and kind of eyeballing up that next election. So with that said, this is what I sent to my senator. I said, thank you for voting no on the gun control package. Also, thank you to all the Republicans who stopped immediate effect. The substitute that kept protection for manufacturers and dealers was also a big deal. Of course, I'm still outraged any of it passed, but I appreciate the minority holding the line the best you could. It was brief. It was simple. If you guys just are wanting my opinion, I would recommend maybe something like that. Simple to the ones that actually did what you were demanding that they do. And then whatever you want to the people that <laughs> voted for this crap. I always encourage to be somewhat professional. By no means, never, ever, ever be violent with these people in any email or any face-to-face -face interaction. It ain't going to do you any good. Just keep in mind, just like the Bible says, there's times for peace and there's times for war. Our founding fathers set up a process, okay? A process that you could do with phone calls in the court of public opinion. There's also another process that our founding fathers talked about, and people say they want it on the internet, but... I don't want that either. I don't want it to go to that. But when you're still dealing in the discourse of writing, calling, voting, when you're still to that point, which the founding fathers did do that for a long time, for like 30 years, by the way, before Lexington and Concord. If you just do something where you're just like so radical or so blatantly threatening, you're just going to get arrested. And then you're just going to make a huge news headline that says radical, blah, 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 gun owner. 
and you're liable to get a whole other list of gun control bills passed. That's just how it works. Yes, I know what happened in the spring of 1775. The shot heard around the world went off, but the founding fathers didn't do that until the culture was ready, until they had the people behind them. You know, when they declared the Declaration of Independence, they basically say near the end that we have the people on our side. We have the divine providence on our side. And they knew it was time. But for literally decades before that, they did the same exact stuff that we're talking about right here. I don't want it to ever come to anything worse, but it may. And if it does, it won't be because I want it to. But right now, the stage we're at with all of our grief and frustrations, I'm telling you one more time, it does not do good to call them up and threaten them. It's not going to work out well for you. Because trust me, you'll just end up in jail. You're not going to have 5 million Michiganians marching behind you like you might think right now. The culture's just not there. Some of you might be telling me I'm right. Some of you might be telling me I'm wrong, but I've been checking the temperature of the state a lot lately to see where people are at with things. And I think right now the best thing you guys can be doing is, is talking to your friends and family about all of this gun control and how it's literally insane. And then I think you should be talking to your legislators. We do have a representative form of government, a constitutional republic, if we can keep it. And that's what you're supposed to do. You're supposed to have a government at the consent of the governed. When the government becomes contrary to that, you have the right, you have the duty to abolish the government. And put in a new government that you see fit will be most likely to affect your safety and happiness. Well, there's many things that can do that, including a big recall petition that I believe is going to be coming just in the next few months. There's many things we can do that are literally right out of the Declaration of Independence and out of the Founding Fathers playbook. And I'm looking forward to a lot of that. I don't know about you guys. Okay, so the licensing, universal background checks, registration for long guns, as well as, like we already have with pistols, passed the Senate. Red flag has passed the Senate. Storage laws have passed the Senate. The House has taken up and passed 40, House Bill 4138 and the two other companion bills. The House has not taken up the storage and the red flag yet. Could be next week. Probably be next week. So what happens next? This might be a little boring for some of you, but there's some good information here. Do you guys want me to read a little bit of this? This literally explains how a bill becomes a law in Michigan. It is a couple pages long, but I do also have this document on that locals post, which is linked down there in the description. Because I already know there's going to be comments, and I can't see all of them right now in real time because there's way more of you than me but I will be going back and reading them afterwards. And I already know people are probably wondering little things. So I can go through this if you want me to. I can kind of do a quick version. Meanwhile, I'm going to read a couple of super chats and let me know if you guys want me to go through this because it is kind of germane right now. What could happen next? QD with a super chat. Thanks, man. I appreciate you being so generous to the channel, man. And a channel member. He says, don't forget about FedEx, yep, UPS, USPS, Bank of America, the credit card companies. I've been covering all that stuff on the channel, too. <sighs> but wait, there's more, right, QD? No, you're right. All illegal registries. The Supreme Court is probably too busy trying not to get Clinton. God bless <laughs> God bless Clarence Thomas, and gosh, I pray God's watching over some of those justices who are really trying to smack a lot of this stuff down. Wow. Yep. Look, this is a concerted effort. This isn't just Michigan. This is the whole country. They call it the New World Order. 
the new social world order, the Green New Deal, the World Economic Forum, that you'll have nothing, you'll be happy. Take the guns first, then no due process. I mean, you guys know what's going on. Marco Polo with a super chat and a channel member. Thanks, man. He said, good stream tonight. Two A supporters in Michigan. Stay strong. Little something for your trip to South Carolina. Well, thanks a lot, man. I've been going to Lansing a lot. I am going to be going to Lansing in the beginning of next week to try to catch a session or two. And then I will be heading down to South Carolina for a couple days. Between traveling and sleeping, it's going to be like three, four days. But I will be at the Palmetto State Armory, the gathering event which is a public event down there in South Carolina. And maybe I'll see some of you guys there. If you see me down at that event, definitely walk up and say hi to me because you all know what I look like, but I might not recognize you because I just know your screen name, right? And some of you use real pictures in your avatars and some of you don't. Okay. How a bill becomes a law. This is actually very important because people ask me so many questions in live stream chats, in comment sections, which makes it clear most people in Michigan don't know how a bill becomes a law, which is fine with me. I'm not a lawyer. I'm not a politician. I don't even want to know how it becomes a law. If there were zero gun control laws, well, then guess what? 2A EDU would just be talking about firearms reviews, which I love doing, and that'd be great. But I don't have time to do any firearms reviews, which I love doing because... I won't have any firearms left to review if I can't raise as much public awareness to what's going on as possible. And there's a lot more money, by the way. I just saw someone put dollar signs in here. There's a lot more money if I was doing firearms reviews. Trust me. People that make the most money doing this are getting sponsorships from all of the gun companies. You guys don't hear me say this is brought to you by such and such gun company because they don't. My sponsors are you guys, so I appreciate all the ways you guys support and keep this channel going. But I'm dead serious. There's a lot more money in if you review firearms and tangible products like that. I just love to do gun reviews because I love guns. And they will be on my channel soon. I'm going down to a shooting event in South Carolina, so I'll have some footage from that. And I'm really looking forward to talking to the people that are going to be there from Gun Owners of America because a lot of you want to know what they're doing. Introduction. Bills may be introduced in either house of the legislature. So we have two chambers. We have the lower chamber of the house, the upper chamber of the Senate. Okay. Senate bills are filed with the Secretary of the Senate. House bills are, okay, you don't need all that. Let's just go through here real quick. Title reading. Under the state constitution, every bill must be read three times before it may pass. The courts have held, however, this requirement can be satisfied by reading the bill's title. That's why I have to dig through this, because it'll literally say... When you look at the clerk of the house, we're going to now proceed to the first reading of House Bill number 4243, a bill to impose liability for the sale, delivery, or transfer of firearms and require liability insurance the people of the state of Michigan enact. But they read way faster than me, and you can't understand them. That does count. Okay. Referral to committee. Upon, upon introduction, a bill is also referred to a standing committee. I've talked about these bills going through the committees. As it goes through the committee, it can either be reported with favorable recommendations, unfavorable, with amendments, without amendments, or they can let it die in committee and take no action. Well, all these gun control bills have been reported favorably throughout other committees by the time we saw them go for votes on the House and Senate floor. Now let's get into some of the stuff that's a little more pertinent. So committees, committees, general orders for second readings, third readings. Like, this stuff is interesting, and that's why I left the link on that locals post, and that post is linked in the description. All right. Uh, Five-day rule. No bill can become law at any regular session of the legislature until it has been printed and reproduced and is in possession of each house for at least five days. Immediate effect. No act shall take effect until the expiration of 90 days from the end of the session in which the measure was enacted. The legislature may give immediate effect to an act by two-thirds vote of the members elected and serving in each house. Right there. That's immediate effect. Now, in the Michigan House of Representatives, that's a dog and pony show. I've talked about it before on previous streams, and I found some footage from a house session. Yes, last night after the funeral, I was digging through like 12 hours of sessions, and I found a clip 
And I'm going to make a video soon and post it up here where you guys can see that in the house, it's a bunch of BS. It's a dog and pony show. I'm super frustrated. Everyone that sees it will be frustrated. However, however, in the Senate, they still have the rules in place there, or they're still following their own rules and still somewhat following the Michigan Constitution enough where they do actually get to demand the A's and nays on immediate effect. That's what happened earlier today. This package did not pass with immediate effect. It's supposed to have to go through the House and Senate, which I guarantee you, if they were following the actual letter of the law, in my opinion, and the Constitution, it wouldn't have passed with immediate effect anyways, like with the House Bill 4138, which was the universal background check. It's a total farce. I'm going to shine some more light on that to you guys. Now, this is something else that's going to come into play, and you'll be hearing more about this in the near future. If a bill passes, it is sent to the other house of the legislature where the bill follows the procedure outlined above, resulting in defeat or passage. If a bill is passed by both houses in identical form, the bill is ordered and enrolled by the house in which the bill originated. Following enrollment and printing, the bill is sent to the governor. She'll sign all of these, and then they will become laws. If a bill is passed in a different form by the second house, the bill must be returned to the house of origin and one of the following occurs. If the amendment or substitute bill of the second house is accepted on the house of origin, the bill is enrolled, printed, and sent to the governor. It should also be noted that either house may amend an amendment made by the other to a bill or joint resolution. At any time while in possession of the bill, either house may recede from its position in whole or in part, and the bill may be returned to the other house for this purpose. If this further action is agreed upon by both houses, the bill is ordered and enrolled. So even though it didn't take immediate effect in the Senate, two of these would need kicked over to the House, actually all three, because there might be minor differences in the one that the House passed. The House can make amendments and markups to it, change it. It can go back to the Senate, and it can go back and forth to the point where they could come around a second time and probably put it into immediate effect. I'm not a lawyer, but this isn't over yet. That's why I try to be accurate when I say the Senate Republicans have held the line. This still isn't over yet. They've held the line so far. I would suggest encouraging the ones that are doing what you demanded them to do. I would suggest discouraging the ones that did the opposite of what you demanded them to do, right? If the amendment or substitute bill of the second house is accepted in the house of origin, the bill is enrolled, printed, and sent straight to the governor. Okay. I read that one first. This gets kind of complicated. I don't want to read all of it. I can tell I'm boring you guys because there's a lot less people watching than there were five minutes ago. So any questions on what can happen between the House and Senate on these bills? It covers it pretty well here. The link to this is in that Locals post, which is in the description of this video. I'm going to read a couple more chats here, and then I'm going to do a very quick lightning round of telling you guys probably most of all of the other gun control bills that are in Michigan right now. I've done videos on all of these, separate videos, but it might be nice to have a quick recap because some people forget. They're like, there's so many bills, I can't even keep track anymore. QD with a huge super chat, $100. Thanks so much, man. I really, really appreciate it, dude. And also being a channel member, he says, say hi for me. I definitely will. And if you want to email me your name, if you go by something other than that, I will say hi that way, man. He says, here's gas money. Thank you. 13.7 jackals. Dude, I would love that. I did go look for them because when you left me that other chat in a previous stream, I was like, do they exist? And I just don't know yet. Or I don't think they have those yet. I happen to be friends with some people in high places there. And I will do the best I can and tell them, like, look, like, you need to have a 13.7 Jackal. 13.7 inch barrels, what he's talking about. And the Jackal is a cool gun. And I did do a review on the PSA Jackal before it was released to the public at this very event exactly one year ago. So hopefully there's something cool like that when I go to the gathering that I can do a review on. Thanks, man. I appreciate it. 
I know you definitely helped me with the place I'm going to be staying at down there. And yeah, probably just paid for a third of my gas money. I appreciate you and everybody who's been helping out to keep the channel going. And for all of you that are offering um, encouragement, really, really appreciate that, guys. Dude, I'm going to be going around the show trying to find something cool to talk about with you guys for sure. All right. If you guys have any questions here, I'll take a peek at the chat again in just a second. Okay, here we go. I'm going to try to go through pretty quickly here. So these are the Senate bills, okay? The Senate passed the three subject package today. The House has already passed one of the three. House bill number 4243, $1 million in insurance. A person that is a firearms dealer shall maintain liability insurance that provides coverage for personal injury or property damage that results from the sale, delivery, or transfer of the firearms by the person, including coverage for liability imposed by this act. The limits of the coverage required by this section must not be less than $1 million. So it's going to raise the rates of insurance that a lot of your local gun shops already have as well as maybe some of them have to get a whole new policy. It's going to be very, very expensive. It's either going to shut down some gun shops, which no doubt I believe it will, and or raise your prices through the roof for guns and transfers. Maybe you bought something online and you go pay the transfer fee. That has to be absorbed somehow. So the state of Michigan is mandating that they have a very hefty insurance policy. And you know what? I just had another Freudian slip because this fell right on the floor, and that's where this should be at. Does anyone disagree? I know someone just said, here, here. You should have just left the darn thing on the floor and stomped at it. Tell that. Call your senator and say, hey, and your representative. Call your representative and say, call Representative Jamie Thompson and say, I was watching the two-way EDU stream. It fell on the floor, and he stepped on it and said, that's where it should stay. <laughs> Oh, boy. We have to get behind some of these good reps and senators, guys. I know my friend Phil, who's in here right now, Crazy Heathen, he can vouch for this, man. We might not like all the same exact people, but there are some representatives right now and senators in the Michigan House and Senate, and this is another small silver lining. If you guys don't believe me, like I promise you it's true. Phil will vouch for me in here. Crazy Heathen, check out his channel, by the way. Another awesome dude from Michigan, okay? So there's actually some that are, like, just as big of fighters as, like, all of us. Like, I'm not even joking. There's some reps in there that are, like, shall not be in fringe from my cold, dead hands. And a lot of them never even wanted to become politicians is what I'm learning. They just ran for office because they were sick of a tyrannical government and they couldn't find anybody better in their hometown, so they ran themselves. There's a lot of new people, especially in the Michigan House right now. So they're not all bad. I'm watching them. Trust but verify if they do something bad, you guys will be the first to know. But I've had candid conversations. I've gone on walks with some of these representatives. I've sat down with them. A couple of them have actually become my friends. There's some actually good people in there. And I know since I'm on the Internet, I'm going to get some hate for saying that. But I mean that as encouragement. I truly do. House bill number 4211. Wow, some more generous super chats coming in. Thanks, guys. I'm going to read these in just one second here. House bill number 4211, 14-day waiting period. Are you in Michigan, QD? I'll try to keep my eye out. If I don't see your reply, I will definitely get that later. Um, a seller of a firearm shall not deliver the firearm to the purchaser of the firearm until at least 14 days after the date the sale of the firearm is completed. A person that violates this subsection is guilty of a misdemeanor, punishable by imprisonment. Now, couple that with all these universal background checks, they're going to be making all this stuff go through that they can on paperwork, on the registry, with the license, and then still make you wait two weeks. House Bill number 4203. This has to do with possession and transfer and a whole bunch of stuff. I've already done a video on this. But this is going to change the age of 18 to 21, okay, in many instances. And as you go through this bill, this and all these bills are linked to that locals post, guys. 
It's linked in the description here if you want to see them all in one place. You'll see a whole bunch of times where they take 18 and cross it out to 21. So now we're raising the age for, in certain cases, possession, in certain cases, transfers, with some exceptions. House Bill number 4205. This is no, quote, assault weapon within a 1,000 foot of a government building, courthouse, or school. A person who openly carries an assault weapon within a 1,000 feet of a government building, courthouse, or school, knowing that person is within a 1,000 foot, a government building, courthouse, or school, is guilty of a crime as follows. First offense misdemeanor, then it goes into felony, then it goes into a worse felony, and I already did a video on this, but it gives all the characteristics, the shoulder thing that goes up, a barrel shroud that keeps you from burning yourself, whatever, whatever. This is the so-called no open carry of assault weapons anywhere near any type of government building and other places, unfortunately. Just real quick, trying to take a peek at the chat here. Name's Quinn. Got you, man. Thank you. I want to know if you're in Michigan because I want to give you some Michigan swag. Or even if you don't live in Michigan, you might want it. Great Lakes gun rights. I'll give you guys a quick teaser before I go into um, these bills. Great Lakes gun rights sent me a box full of swag. And I'm not going to be able to do it tonight because I'm doing this stream totally by myself. But my wife helps me on Fridays where I'll have her help me pick somebody. But I have some Great Lakes gun rights swag, including shirts, stickers, hats. He didn't send them to me personally. He sent them to my viewers. So I will be giving some of this stuff out tomorrow night on my Friday stream. I'd love to right this minute, but I'm literally totally by myself here. There's like so many more of you than me right now. Dude, shout out to Virginia, man. A lot of good people in Virginia that hang out in these chats. You guys are kind of the opposite of Michigan. You guys have been kind of on the upstroke. You know what I'm saying? Thank you so much, QD. I saw that, man. Thank you. Okay. House Bill number 4198. Open carry ban in certain local jurisdictions. Right now, Michigan has a preemption law where no local jurisdiction, county, township, city, village, whatever, right, can enact something more strict than Michigan law. Well, this would change that. Prohibiting the open carry of firearms within the local unit of government. Here's these bills, 49 and... 4149 and 4150, when you compound them together, it basically gets rid of concealed carry in tons of places, and it also makes your CPL completely useless in many instances and bans open carry as well. No concealed carry in government buildings, 4149, a building owned or leased by the state, or that part of a building owned or leased by the state. I'm going really quick, guys. I've already covered these, though, before. It's just there's a lot of new people here. And, like, new people, yes, more people that can spread the good word. House Bill number 4150, no possession in certain areas. A building owned or leased by this state or that part of a building owned or leased by the state. Now, this would be banning simple possession. And they crossed out the exception that says a person licensed by the state or another to carry a concealed weapon. So this is basically saying for everybody, okay, and... A CPL is no longer an exemption. Basically, destroy CPLs in Michigan. There's a couple more here. I'll go real quick. Again, these have been covered. House Bills 4127 and 4128 makes it where certain times around voting season where you couldn't carry in so many places and you wouldn't even know where they all are. So 4127, polling place and drop boxes. Except it's right in the subsection. A person shall not do in the following. While the polls are open on an election day, possess a firearm in a polling place or within 100 foot of any entrance of a building in which a polling place is located. Beginning on the second Saturday before an election and ending on the Sunday before the election, possess a firearm in an early voting site. Described in Section 4 of Article 2 of the State Constitution of 1963 or within 100 feet of any entrance to a building in which an early voting site is located. That could be your township hall where you pay your water bill, where you also have the right to go to the meetings and find out what your local public servants are doing there. Also, for 40 days before an election, possess a firearm with 100 feet of any absent voter ballot drop box. The only thing it doesn't apply to 
is a uniformed police officer acting in the course of the duties or an individual who possesses a firearm in that individual's residence. Doesn't say anything about curtilage. That was that fancy word I was talking about in the BB gun band. No, it means that if you live in town and there's a drop box on the corner, you could not even step out on your front porch with a firearm or you would be criminal. You could not drive down that street if you were to drive within 100 foot of one. You could not walk your dog. You could be going grocery shopping. And on the other side of a vehicle blocking your view, there could be a voter drop box and you could be criminalized there. Basically makes it where any time around voting between such and such Sunday and such and such Saturday, you're so afraid to even take a firearm out of your house or else you'll go to jail. That's the intent, in my opinion, for this. 4128 absent voter ballots, except as provided in the subsection. The only exception is a uniformed police officer yet again. A person shall not, while absent, absent voter ballots are being processed, possess a firearm. In an absent voter counting place or a combined absent voter counting place or within 100 foot of any entrance to an absent voter counting place or combined absent voter counting place. This could be township halls, city halls, schools, churches, all kinds of different places. Okay. Just yesterday, I did a video on, and this is where if you don't get it yet, hopefully your friends and family you're talking about this will we'll finally get it. This is the BB gun ban. An individual less than 18 years of age shall not use or possess a pneumatic gun outside the curtilage of the individual's dwelling unless the individual is accompanied by another individual over 18 years of age. An individual who violates this act is guilty of a misdemeanor, punishable by imprisonment of not more than 90 days or a fine of $500 or both. Yeah, here's a pneumatic gun, though. It's more than what you would normally think. As used in this act, pneumatic gun means any implement designed as a gun that will expel a BB or pellet by spraying gas or air. There goes most of the airsoft or a large portion of it, BB gun, pellet gun. Somebody sent a comment yesterday. They said, don't let representative churches know about slingshots. I laughed, right? But I'm like, actually, don't let her know about slingshots. That'll be the next ban. Like, we joke about this stuff, but stuff which we joked about, that could be the very next bill. I already know about some bills that are coming too, guys. I can't say what they are quite yet. Like I've said so many times, there's certain things I learn about I can't talk about here, not because I wouldn't tell you guys, because I don't want the other side to know, because you don't want the other side to know everything. There's more coming soon. QD, dude, super huge super chat. Thanks so much, man. Jeez, oh, Pete's, dude. I really appreciate you. And yeah, you guys are what keeps this channel financially going. And I do put it all back into the channel. He says, keep fighting the good fight, dude. Well, you keep fighting the good fight. And I definitely appreciate your encouragement, man. Thank you so much. Wow. That's like literally insane. Let me go over here. I'm having a hard time doing this. I saw some other chats, guys. Normally, I'm on here just talking, and um, my wife helps me on the other end. You guys don't see her on camera, but she's here within the dashboard, and she's pinning chats and finding stuff. Here, I'm totally by myself scrolling through. But I know I just found another one, and I think I found it right here. Thanks, QD. Thanks so much, man. Should be pretty close to my gas money to get to South Carolina. Um, Low Pan Street Sorcerer with a super chat. Thank you. I appreciate you supporting the channel, man. It says immediate effect is actually preferred from a legal perspective, as all citizens of Michigan now have standing. These laws are right for SCOTUS. Okay, I'm not a lawyer. There might be some angle that I am not familiar with, but people I've talked to have said in Lansing and other places have said, if it doesn't take immediate effect, that gives us time to go through the court system. Because if it does take immediate effect, then people could already have their doors kicked in and their guns confiscated and be in jail in the meantime. I think there's no good answer, right? Is, is that what we're saying here? Because maybe what you're saying is immediate effect might make it where more people could sue. That's what standing would mean. And it also might make it 
more beneficial that way. I don't know. Okay. I don't know. I, I know exactly what you're saying. You're saying if nobody's harmed by any of these laws because they haven't gone into effect yet, how do you litigate? Yes, but there's so much prior litigation that's gone on during that. I think there's still ways that we'll have standing. But besides the courts, the court system, right, meaning the third branch of government, there's a court of public opinion. And this does give us time to raise awareness. And there are things like recall petitions, okay, which I can't say they are happening because there's laws associated with this, but I believe will be happening as soon as it's legally appropriate time to do that. So, yeah. No, I, I get what you're saying about standing. I think that there is going to be standing, and I'm going to be talking to people from GOA just next week from, like, their corporate main office, if you will. I've also been talking quite a bit to Brendan from Great Lakes Gun Rights, and I will see if I can reach out to Tom from Michigan Open Carry, who is a lawyer, and maybe he'll have some, some insight on that. But most of the people I've been talking to and in this fight have said that it's a good thing if it does not take immediate effect. However, you do bring up standing and somebody has to be harmed by it or whatever to have standing in court, right? All right. I am going to take a quick peek at the chat here, see what you guys are up to. I don't think I need to keep this stream going for too much longer. But I do want to see if there's a couple questions here. That might help. Yeah, here's the hard part. Once this stuff gets passed, the odds of it actually getting repealed are very slim. They had a rally yesterday. I just couldn't make it. I wanted to be there so bad. I was there the day before. But I had a family member's funeral to go to, and I'm not making an excuse, but I'm sure you guys all understand. But I was talking to my friend South Paul, who I saw in the comments here earlier. Maybe he's still hanging out. Longtime friend and supporter of the channel. He came in and was giving me a few updates, right? Sending me some messages on YouTube and locals. He was mainly communicating with me on locals and saying, yeah, man, there's some of us here. We're like-minded. We're here to counter protest. And then he said, Representative um, Angela Regas who's a rock star, really like her a lot. She came down, I think. Is that how I got that story at a certain point and brought a bunch of you guys up to her office? So that was cool. Seeing a representative interact with the people. I definitely like to see that. And um, made some new friends doing it. That's the other thing, too. Start going to some of these events and start getting involved and not only are you doing your duty to your country and your state, but you also meet some good friends. I've had it happen many, many times. I mean, that's what that's. I mean, just look at tonight. I'm out here talking about what's going on with these Senate bills and all these other House bills, and I'm also getting to hang out with almost 200 good people, right? So it's it's a win-win. It really is. That's what I, that's what I want you guys to start working on the best you can. This culture war, just talking to your friends, your family, whoever. Be like, no, there's actually some pretty cool people in this fight. Not only can you save your country and save your state, but you can also have some fun on the way, too. There's a lot of really, really cool people that I've met. Good conversations, shooting with people. You know what I'm saying? So, yeah, it's your duty to do it to protect your country and your state. But if you want to know what's in it for you, having a good time sometime along the way, the best you can, right? There we go. There's Dale. What's happening, man? How you doing? He says, came for the gun, stayed for the fight. Absolutely. Same thing with me. And I am going to do more gun reviews soon, guys. I promise. I love doing those. It's just <sighs> trying to do videos on all this stuff I can because there's so much going on. Boy, oh, boy, that makes me where I can't even sleep at night knowing that there's people that still just don't know what's going on. And there's still so many people right now that don't. So many people. Thank you, QD. Thanks, Harry Gremley. Smash the thumbs up, people. That's a totally free way you can help support the channel. It's called The Algorithm. More thumbs up it has. It's supposed to help them spread it to more people. 
I just want these videos to get a lot of reviews so that more people can become aware. With the recent economic downturn, look, it's called demonetized a lot of times. Even if they are putting ads on the videos, though, ad rates have dropped like in half on YouTube. Like the economy is in big trouble right now. Trust me. So definitely not worried about the extra 30 cents to $2 in ad revenue I could get. But I would like 100,000 people to see these videos. But this is a small channel. And heck, for how small this channel is, we're making a lot of moves, though. You guys sharing and spreading the word, we are definitely getting the word out. And that's why I'm doing these videos. Um, QD says, if enough good people do a little bit, it should be enough. I completely agree with you. And not a lot of people can really do too much. But those of you that are here helping to financially support, awesome. That helps literally let the rubber meet the road with what I'm doing and just the emotional support and encouragement, which is also very, very important. I could make more money just mowing more lawns and whatnot. So trust me, the emotional encouragement, knowing that there's some people who are actually getting uplifted and that we might be making a small difference or at the very least we're not contributing to the downfall of this country. That's the main reason why I do this. I think you guys know that. Um, rights are not tradition. If if they were honest, it would not take long to find um, thousands or millions of people who've been harmed by gun control. No, you're absolutely right. And when it comes to these stats, look, like these anti-gunners that had that big rally. Giffords had her big rally yesterday in Lansing. There wasn't as many as I thought, actually, but there were hundreds of people there. From what I understand, our side had maybe a couple dozen. If I'm wrong, tell me. I'm just telling you guys what was told to me by one of our longtime viewers and friends of the channel here that was there yesterday. Remember Mark Twain? He says there's lies, there's damn lies, and then there's statistics, which are even worse than damn lies. Here's what they'll do. They'll say, the number one cause of death by children is firearms. So you think to yourself, child, okay, that's one years old, two years old, 10, 12, 13, maybe 14. But if you look at the polls from the CDC themselves, now I don't trust the CDC, but this is where we use the CDC. Remember? All the people, my body, my choice, but not your body, your choice. You have to take a certain poke, a shot, or whatever. You know, that's most of the people that are anti gun fall into that camp. Okay? Now, they worshiped St. Fauci, the CDC. So bring the CDC up to them and make them aware that. Okay, children, what's that even mean? Because the other side will say, for the children, more children are, are, are hurt by guns than anything else. Until you find out they've stretched the definition of children to like anyone that's up to 19. Now we get to include all of the suicides, which that's mental health problems that do need addressed. These are very, very tough questions. Tough questions that I'm demanding these representatives and senators I'm demanding it to the Republicans. Like, you guys have to find a way to bring this up. I don't know the answer to that. I'm not a mental health professional. However, that's the root cause of almost all of this. Also, when they include children all the way up to, quite frankly, adults, it includes all the gangbangers, which, quite frankly, is a whole separate society living within this country, completely outside of the rule of law. We have places like Iraq which is called Chirac, because they say it's more dangerous in Chicago on any given night than Iraq. That's what a lot of troops that bravely served our country in the dangerous place of Iraq came back and said, but it's still more dangerous in Chicago than Iraq. Gangbangers are gangbanging and shooting every day, and they're including those stats by adjusting what it is to be a child in there. Now, if you just come down and say that it's children ages 1 through 14, Firearms fall way, way down the list, almost off of the short list. So I'm not going to keep boring you guys with that. There's a guy named John Lott, and I actually left the link of his book down in the description. It's called More Guns, Less Crime. And he testified in front of the Senate committee, and I was there watching him when they were very rude to him, by the way, the Democrat majority was. And he can rattle off all of those stats, but I just gave you two quick examples of how just, just defining what age group is a child can literally get to the stats wherever they want them to be. And that's what they're doing right now. And they'll never mention stats. 
of the hundreds of thousands and even millions of good lives that are saved and protected with guns every year. Many that are reported, but many are not reported because in some cases simply presenting the firearm from her purse or his waistband, whoever's protecting their life and their family, is enough to ward off the criminal. They'll never bring up those stats. They'll take stats and change ages. They'll change this. What's upside down, they'll just switch it all around to where they'll run out there with these tropes and say, guns are the leading cause of death for children. Hmm. School shootings are up by 400 million gazillion percent. Well, yeah, because they've changed the definition of what a school shooting is. Did you know that you could have a school shooting nowadays where the school's not even in session, it's summer vacation, and a block down the road, gangbangers were gangbanging, and there was a shooting. That would count as a school shooting. Even though when most normal people hear there was a school shooting, they think that people, some guy like ran into a school, and unfortunately that does happen occasionally. And there are sick people in this country, and mental health, and letting video games raise people instead of families raising people is the big problem. Corporate greed, government greed, extortion, and taxes has gotten it to the point where it's hard to have homemakers. Most people live in a house nowadays that isn't even a home because both parents are working so many hours just to try to barely make ends meet. The kids are getting raised by violent video games and screens and all that. And it's not just because the video games are violent. I don't blame violent video games like some people do. It's just the fact that kids are getting raised by video games nowadays instead of actual parents. But nobody will look and say, oh, well, there's problems with violent people in this country. No one will talk about mental health because that's too tough. And nobody will talk about having families again in this country. You know, a lot of the people support groups. A lot of people that support gun control support groups like Antifa and BLM. Where on BLM's website, they literally said one of their core principles was to dissolve a nuclear family. You know, they're going to ban BB guns right now, but kids for years, for hundreds of years in this country, used to walk to school with real firearms, put them in their locker, and walk back home with them. And we didn't have these highly publicized events now as many times as they occur. Clearly there's a problem, but the problem isn't the guns. The problem is clearly the people. And then on another note, they would also try to tell you that we never had mass shootings in this country, but actually we did. First mass shooting was in this country before the United States even became a country. And the school that was bombed and the nightclub that was burned down and all of these other ways that actually many more people have been killed by violent murderers than with guns, but they won't tell you that either. And there's nothing in any of these bills that actually tries to even address people. Think about this for a minute. There's good people with guns and there's bad people with guns. And that's why I always say it. We're in a battle of good versus evil. That's all this is. It's a battle of good versus evil. That's all it ever will be, really. And every one of these is take the guns, take the guns, take the guns. No due process. It never talks about doing anything to try to course correct the bad people. And there's all these laws on the books. And if we even had one gun law be unconstitutional, so all of these infinitely unconstitutional laws we already had in Michigan, they didn't do anything to stop what happened at Michigan State. It was already a gun-free zone. Although I don't agree with the premise of this law because you should not have a permit. You should not have to have a permit to carry in your vehicle. But by their standards, we already had a law that was going to prevent anybody from ever carrying a gun in a vehicle without a permit because that's what they claim these laws do. If they pass this law, it'll never happen, right? That's what they'll tell you. That's what they're saying right now. He had already been pulled over, already caught carrying a gun without a CPL. Shouldn't be a law. I agree, but there's a law in Michigan, a long-standing law. Prosecutor let him off, didn't put him behind bars. So if we're going to have laws, and then they don't even prosecute him anyways, not saying they should be prosecuting people for firearms laws, 
don't conflate what I'm saying here, but I'm, I'm talking from the other side. If we pass this law, it'll prohibit people. No, it won't. Criminals don't follow laws. Evil people don't care about laws. And even when they do get caught breaking them, liberal prosecutors don't prosecute or do anything either. It's literally insane. I don't make the big bucks to be in office. I didn't run for office. I don't have the answers to all this. I just know the government is hardly ever the solution. The government is usually almost always the problem. But even at that, I don't see anyone in the government in these gun control bills that the majority is putting forth talking about anything even remotely, remotely resembling a solution. Yeah, the deep state, the Overton window. Yes, that's why I mentioned earlier in this stream. I know it's not necessarily gun-related in and of itself, but it's all 2A related. It's all the same thing. Good versus evil. <laughs> Tyranny versus liberty. That's why I brought up World Economic Forum. Great Reset. New Social Order. New World Order. Isn't that funny? Some of you guys are a little older like me. I'm going to have a birthday here in about a month and a half. I'll just say this. I'm over 40 but I'm not 50. How about that? And there was a time when if you even got on like the air, even on YouTube, even just a few years ago, three years ago, four years ago, if I would have got on here and said the new world order, everyone would have been like, what are you even talking about? Like Tim file hat? No. Former vice president would get on TV nowadays and say new world order, new social world order. I mean, they're literally telling us. They're literally telling us. Okay, there was a um, there was a rally that was meant to be a counter protest at the Capitol yesterday. Um, I did not sponsor that event, but I passed on the information I could on it. I think there was about twenty people there. Um, Crazy Heathen is sponsoring, co-sponsoring a rally or promoting whatever you want to call it, putting on a rally. That's April fifteenth. I put that in my community post section here. You might have to scroll down a little bit. I'll repost it in a little while to put it back near the top, but it'll just take you guys two seconds. You'll find the information for that on my community page. I suggest you also make sure you have that on your community page, um, Crazy Heathen, because I've been recommending people check out your channel if they want to, I don't know, hang out with another Michigan guy, gun guy, Second Amendment guy, freedom guy. It's hard to give you labels because I'll list like a hundred different things, right? A lot of you guys in the chat right here are saying rally, rally, rally. And I hear you. I do. But I know everyone hates when there's a but. Well, this is where I keep on encouraging you guys to keep talking to your friends and family. Because what happens in many instances is everyone wants a rally, 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 but then there is one and only 20 people come. Now, there's arguments to be made. There's still fellowship among those 20 people, and it might be the building block for, and I'm all for that. I'm all for that. But a reasonable person could also say that if you have a rally and only 20 people show up, it's kind of counterproductive to your cause because it looks so weak and so lame and so bad, it actually like invigorates the other side more. I'm not sure that rallies in and of themselves will save this country or this state or the Second Amendment. However, however, the Founding Fathers put down a pretty good outline of what we could do to help save our republic, or as Ben Franklin said, a republic if you can keep it. And the right to peaceably assemble was enumerated, protected, not granted, but protected by the First Amendment for a reason. So I do, I do encourage peaceful protest, the right to peaceably assemble. And that's not my idea. That's nothing I came up with. That was literally the founding fathers came up with preserving that right that they acknowledged would already exist. So if it's in the Constitution and the Bill of Rights, anything that's in the Bill of Rights, I'm all for. So. Some people will say, well, rallies are good, rallies are bad. Well, I think the Founding Fathers told us our, their opinion on that. 
I'm all for rallies, both constitutionally and for building culture. And I think I made both sides of the argument, but there is, I hear people talk. You guys hear people talk. When it's like, well, there's 12 people having a rally out in front of the Michigan Capitol steps. You guys know what I'm saying? It might be a little bit. It might be a little bit down. It might it might actually kind of hurt the cause a little bit in a way. But with that said, I'm not discouraging you. Look, I go to Lansing by myself certain days. Sometimes I'll go with one friend. So, you know, it's like nothing wrong with going there totally by yourself. But if you're going to have it actually deemed a rally, if you actually are going to declare it a rally and actually get the, I hate to say this, permits that are required at the Capitol to do it, just make sure there's going to be more than like nine people there. I'm just taking one more look at the chat here. I'm going to get off within the next probably like five minutes at the most. I just want to take a quick peek at the chat. Do you guys have any questions? This stuff's always an uphill battle, guys. Trust me. There's people in here having good conversations, and some people are trying as hard as they can to gain support for one thing, and then there's other people right afterwards just really trying to poke a hole in that balloon and change course, and that's how it always goes. There's nothing new. There is nothing new. QD, that's a good one. I like that. He said, if you're a good person... Try to just do a little tiny good thing for no reason. It makes the universe happy. You know, I'm kind of smiling right now and happy to see that someone else is saying that because yesterday, and it was concerning something to do with the funeral. And I'm not going to tell you guys any more than that because if I do, then it's totally counterproductive too. I just did it because I wanted to do it. And if I brag about what I did, then that counteracts. I did something nice for somebody yesterday. I'll just leave it at that. It put a smile on their face and probably twice as big a one on my face. All right. We're very divided, yes. We're always divided. Um, the other side. I just like to call it the other side lately because it's like you could say right versus left. And then someone would say, well, that's not a fair way to frame it. I don't like to just say Democrat versus Republican because that's like gang warfare. However, very specifically right now, when it comes to the Senate votes and the House votes that we've already had, it has been on party lines. But even with that said, I still don't want to do Democrats versus Republicans either. But there's always on our side versus their side. Our side we'll get so caught up in so many ways with semantics and while the other side is just a hive mind. <laughs> they all pick a queen bee to give the hormone to and to fertilize and build her up. And then she gives her orders. Then they all just buzz and swarm. If you look at the way a hive works, that's what we mean when we say like a beehive, the hive mind. And they do. Now, they argue about many things, too, behind the scenes. I'm not saying that. However, man, they have anti-gun celebrities. They've brought anti-gun into pop culture. They've got movie stars. They've got, you know, rock stars, pop stars. They have figured that out. And it's not surprising at all. People that are kind of maybe weak-minded and just followers in life tend to go towards more towards the gun control side and people that are kind of more independent and I'll march to the beat of my own drum and the Republic, if we can keep it and I'm going to keep it single handedly, those type of people aren't just going to sit there and take marching orders. I already know this when I read, when I read this chat throughout the next couple of days, I already know what's going to happen and it's actually going to encourage me overall to come back and do another one. And that's why I keep doing I'm going to have lots of kind words, lots of words of encouragement. I'm going to have some people agreeing with what I'm saying and some people disagreeing with what I'm saying, which is totally fine still. And I'll have some people trying to out and out run me right off of my own channel. 
And then I'll get emails afterwards of people trying to run me off of my own channel. And they're clearly not going to be able to because I've been doing this long enough where I'm not going anywhere. But, yeah, th th that goes on. That goes on, guys. It really does. Don't let it get you down, though. I'm just acknowledging it goes on is all I'm saying. Um, Colin out with a super chat. Thanks, man. I appreciate it, dude. And a channel member. He says, I always said the UP should be separate from the lower Michigan as far as laws. UP should be a separate state. Hmm. Come on, man. Speaking of being divisive, hey, my friend here, and he is my friend, is wanting to split states in half. Here's the thing, dude. It would actually work out worse for you, though, unfortunately. I'm kind of all for it in a way. But you you would actually go more blue, I think. Because the vast majority, I think of like Marquette, for example. The vast majority of the population within the UP is pretty dark blue, covered by the Democrats. I think if the UP split from the lower peninsula right now, you might go more blue. I might be wrong on that, but I'd have to look at that. I'd have to look at that. I know as far as like um as far as revenue for the state, I know for a fact the UP is a net negative on the state. So it would actually decrease my tax burden quite a bit if the UP seceded. But yeah, I'm well aware of that. People that live um above the bridge. Kind of don't like people that live below the bridge. Call us trolls because we live under the bridge, right? People from the South find a reason to call me a Yankee every day, which I understand is a deep-rooted fighting words, and I understand it's meant to be an ultimate put-down. But that's okay. Because I tell everybody when I'm going to the Capitol, where I'll be, I just told everybody where I'm going to be down in the South, in South Carolina. Am I wrong, guys? The UP should be its own country, so beautiful and calm. Yeah, half of it's owned by China. Did you know that? Maybe not exactly half, but much of the UP is owned by China, actually. But it's very beautiful. Marquette's very blue and turning blue by the hour. I think I'll look at that just as a little thought exercise because I'm not trying to declare, okay? I'm not trying to declare this, but if I had to opine, it's really close. The UP, where the concentrated people are in Michigan, is turning blue so fast and so radically left, okay? I think the UP could go more blue if it, separated from the lower peninsula if not it's really close if you look at the way things are trending give it just a couple more years and um that would definitely be the case we're right on the edge all right guys i've been literally on here qd says wow lol my thing kind of froze up on me. Okay, guys, here's the deal. All right. I've been talking about how divisive our side is and how the other side is very divisive, but they can get together for what they want. And most of what this chat's now turning into is how the lower peninsula should separate from the, the lower and upper peninsula should separate. Oh, boy. I've literally come on here trying to have encouragement and unity for the Second Amendment. But I don't know. Just read the chat, guys. I don't know what to say at this point. You guys know why I'm here. I've made it very clear why I'm here. <laughs> I'm not here to fight for all of Michigan. for all of Michigan. The Lower Peninsula and the Upper Peninsula. I'm here to fight for all of these 50 states. North, South, East, West. And there's many despicable people that live in every one of these 50 states and in anyone's hometown across the country. That's just how it works. 
That's why it's a battle of good versus evil. But there's also very, very fine people who live in all 50 states and in every single hometown you could think of in this whole country. And I know that's true for a fact. And I know there's nothing new with this under the sun. I will leave you guys with that. What's happening, man? He says, I'm down in Alabama and we love you here. Well, thanks, man. And I love the people of Alabama. I truly do. And by the way, guys, I'll say this real quick because I've talked about this at length in previous streams in the past, but it might have been a year. Yeah. I've ripped on Lincoln more than almost anybody, north or south, and for things that he did. And I've offered support as far as the atrocities and crimes that the federal government committed against the Confederate States. I've actually talked about that before. So I don't grow. I didn't live down there in the South, and I don't live down there in the South. And quite frankly, I didn't fight in the Civil War. And I can literally prove nobody watching here fought in it either, actually. It's a long time ago, but I'm not happy with the way a lot of things went down with all that, to be honest with you. Suspending habeas corpus, locking up judges that ruled against them. The deep state that we're in right now, many people say started with the United States Civil War. Just taking one last look at the chat here. Chanzig says, stay frosty, my friends. You too, man. There's Jane Locke. How you doing, Jane? Nice to see you tonight. Um, Chris says, just keep fighting the good fight. Doing amazing in Michigan. Well, thank you. I appreciate it. I'm just going to do what I can, you know, and I need you guys too, everybody. James Stacy says, love your channel. Hang in there, brother. Oh, no problem. I'm not, I'm not in a bad mood. I just realized the more I was trying to... Talk about unity. The more I saw at least 10 or 12 people in here, you know, I was just calling out an irony. That's all. I'm not mad at any one person or any group of people. Not whatsoever. Dave Thompson, stay strong in Washington state, man. Stay strong, dude. I know. I know. That's literally crazy. I watch what's going on in your state, and I care about it deeply. It's really, really bothering me. I can hardly keep up with the Michigan gun laws right now. And I'd like to cover a lot of the national laws. So I try to hang in there. Kurt Michaels, I'm going to read this real quick before I get off. Hard to believe there isn't a single dim in the Michigan legislature who isn't a gun owner and will stand against these unconstitutional bills. Dude, it's driving me crazy, too. I've been trying to find them. Do you guys want to know why, like, I'm doing posts with Republicans and videos with Republicans? Take a guess. Is it because I'm a Republican Party donor? No. I'm actually not even a Republican. I just find myself voting for them more often than a Democrat. Not a registered Republican. No, it's because they're the ones that'll talk to me. <laughs> I'm being serious. Please, somebody, find me a Democrat in Lansing that will talk to me. I want to talk to them. I, <laughs> you know what I mean? I get it. The Republicans are usually better looking and all of that, and that's great too. That's a little plus, but like, they'll actually talk to me, is what I'm saying. And I haven't talked to all the Republicans in Lansing. I'm just telling you why. Everything looks like it's so partisan, because I have not found one Democrat in Lansing that's shown with their voting record, or their press releases, or their Facebook profile. I've been studying all this. Not one of them is even giving a hint that they'll go against their caucus or go against the party line. But if one of you guys can find me one, please do. That would be very, very refreshing. I would love to disagree. 
I would love to disagree with Democrats on like 50 issues and then just shake each other's hand and be friends for a few minutes on the Second Amendment. You know? I don't know. <laughs> yeah, shut down news. What's happening, man? These Dems all say they believe in the Second Amendment, but I know. I know. You're welcome, Donna. Thank you. Good night, QD. I'm out of here in one second. I just wanted to take two seconds to say hi to a couple people. What's happening if it flips it, Sheps? Nice to see you, man. Because I watch all this stuff after the fact, these chats, and I'm like, man, there was a lot of good people I'd like to say hi to. <laughs> yeah, Chris Wood, Democrats have never been told no, but sure are good at telling you no. Yep. What's happening, D.B. Cooper? Look at his tractor, guys, those of you still in here. I'm putting it on the screen for one second here. That thing's cool. And you did admit to me in another someone else's stream one time, you said, yeah, the tracks did cost more than the tractor. I think I'm right, aren't I, DB? But it still looks cool. It was worth it, dude. Yeah, right's not tradition. Yep. Every major tragedy is he's used to expand the Fed. I agree. We're watching it happen right now. Kimberly Mullins, what's happening? Thank you. I'm glad I read this at the last minute. It's hard for me to tell sometimes when people are joking. So thanks for letting me know. It says, and you're doing an amazing job. We're just messing around. If we can't laugh a little bit, we're all going to go crazy. You, your fight, you're doing an amazing job. Keep up the good fight. We are all behind you. Well, thank you. And maybe some of the guys were and gals were joking around. I have no idea. It's just always been a thing in Michigan where people say the UP should. I'm glad you were joking. That's awesome. All right. Nice to see you, Scott. What's happening, man? Yep, DB just said 100%. See, I remember that. Ting Ting. Good night, Ting Ting. Nice to see you. You've been a longtime friend and viewer of the channel as well. Thank you, Bryce. I appreciate it, man. I'm not really much of a public speaker. However, you just reminded me. For I guess there's still 100 people watching. I have it posted up on my Facebook right now. I am going to be speaking at an event in Novi, Michigan this Saturday at noon. So two days from now, all the details are on my Facebook page because that's where they had posted it, and I was able to share it over there. So, yeah. <laughs> Cutie said joking about RoboCop. Jeez, oh, Pete's. All right, I'm going to leave it at that. I'm out of here, guys, and I don't know. Don't miss me too much because I'll be back again tomorrow night for my regular normal Friday live stream. And I'll probably talk about something a little more on the national level so I don't keep driving you all crazy that don't live in Michigan. I will do that, J.D., in one million years. So you're saying there's a chance. All right, I'm out of here, guys. Thanks for watching. And have a good one. So you're saying there's a chance. 2AE to you for state rep and 999,000 years and 364 days and 23 hours and 59 minutes and 59 seconds. Hmm. That's when I'm running for office, guys. <laughs>